ஐ போவான் வணக்கம் ஆம் வயோனி டிமெல் திஸ் இஸ் பாஸ்டன் லங்கா நியூஸ் பிரிங்கிங் யூ நியூஸ் வியூஸ் அண்ட் என்டர்டெயின்மெண்ட் ஃப்ரம் பாஸ்டன் அண்ட் யூஎஸ்ஏ ருத்ரகுமாரன் ஃபேக்ஷன் இஸ் ஃபாலோயிங் அ பார்ட் சேஸ் டெரரிசம் ரிசர்ச்சர் ஷானக ஜாய்சேகர் military headquarters on a ltt cemetery is that a way to bring reconciliation is people's power not important to minister vimal veeravansa anymore sri lankan beauty in los angeles vying for mrs asia title in usa transnational government of tamil nadu is just a room on top of a shopping mall on 6th avenue in new york it is an imaginary government says Shanaka Jayasekara. According to Jayasekara, Rudra Kumaran faction is falling apart. As Jayasekara points out, it is ironic that Rudra Kumaran, who served as the legal advisor to the LTTE, is now accusing others of war crimes. Shanaka Jayasekara, who has done extensive research on the international network of the LTTE, is a researcher at the Center for Policing, Intelligence and Counterterrorism at Macquarie University, Sydney, Australia. Shanaka joins us from Sydney. Uh, Shanaka, uh, could you please briefly give us an update about the current divisions within the TGTE and what do you think will happen next? There are three factions uh, that uh, have have splintered after the LTTE uh, was defeated uh, in May 2009 now uh, two of the factions which is led by Joe Emanuel and Nadia Van seem to be uh, converging uh, with some degree of um, uh, cooperation uh, and trying to eliminate or trying to uh, uh, overthrow Uh, the Rudra Kumaran faction in the TGTE. Uh, some of the recent developments that have taken place is that 38 uh, members or so-called elected representatives of the TGTE refused to sign or refused to take the oath uh, to be uh, included as mem- uh, elected members of the TGTE. So there are 38 members who have refused to take the oath. Now, on the 18th of uh, uh, this month, March, uh, 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 the TGTE that was Pun Balrajan, uh, who is supposed to be the speaker of the TGTE, <coughs> sent a letter uh, informing them that, uh, that these members uh, uh, would forfeit their position if they don't take the oath. Now, this has, this has caused significant divisions in, in the TGTE. Uh, 31 of these members have formed something called the TGTE Democrats, which is basically a front for the Nadia Van group, and are calling for the TGTE to be turned into a very radical uh, movement uh, that emulates the LTTE. Uh, in fact, it was Nadia Van who uh, re- re- uh, ens- uh, required or made sure that uh, the TGTE proceedings are held with the LTT flag uh, uh, kept at the back uh, of each speaker. So what the TGTE Democrats are attempting to do is to radicalize the uh, TGTE to the extent that it becomes a representation of the LTT itself. And uh, this is the direction that is being taken. and uh, Rudra Kumaran and uh, Pon Balrajan and some of the other members of the Rudra Kumaran faction uh, seem to be resisting this. Uh, so, uh, so do you have any concerns uh, now that Nadiavan faction appears to have the upper hand in the TGT? Uh, one of the fears I have uh, with the Nadiavan faction taking uh, control or getting control of the TGT is is that uh, the, TG, the headquarters of the TGTE, which is currently uh, in a room uh, on top of a shopping mall on 6th Avenue in New York, uh, could be moved to Europe. Now, as long as the TGTE remains uh, in the U.S., uh, headquartered in the U.S., it remains under the Patriot Act and works within the realms of U.S. Uh, uh, law. But however, uh, in Europe, there are far less, controls and uh, lenient laws 
and regulations can give the TGCE uh, a greater degree of uh, maneuverability and can be a process by which the LTTE uh, is replicated in some sort or the other. Uh, in your interview with the Sunday Observer newspaper on March 20th, you said that the government must address the political issues surrounding the ethnic conflict. Uh, do you think there is any progress on this issue? I think there is uh, progress on this issue. Uh, the current talk between the government of Sri Lanka and the TNA, uh, in my view, equate uh, at the same level of the peace talks that were held uh, some time back. Uh, these talks uh, have a very structured approach. Uh, they are divided into two sections. The first section deals with existential issues, the issues relating to day-to-day -day affairs of the population in the North and East. And the second uh, part of the meeting uh, deal with the core issues relating to uh, the ethnic conflict. And in terms of the core issues, the things that are being discussed relate to uh, issues such as the concurrent list under the 13th Amendment, uh, abolition of the concurrent list, and both parties have agreed that uh, uh, that the concurrent list is an impediment to uh, uh, the implementation of the 13th Amendment. Uh, they're working uh, to uh, abolish the concurrent list. They're working on uh, a 13th Amendment plus process to uh, engage in greater level of devolution. So I think uh, there hasn't been sufficient uh, publicity given to the TNA government talks, but I think the government, in my view, is making a, a, a very good attempt uh, with the elected members of the TNA uh, to discuss the issues relating to uh, the core issues of the conflict. So I think uh, the political issues are being addressed, and I, I wish them well, and I hope this, pro uh, this process progresses uh, uh, into the future. Thank you, Shanaka. Uh, that was Shanaka Jayasekara from uh, Sydney, Australia. A news report about a military headquarters in northern Sri Lanka that has been built on the site of a Tamil tiger graveyard is generating lots of emotions and criticism. The LTT's martyrs cult played an important role in motivating its cadres and mobilizing support among the masses. The cemetery served as an important rallying point for recruitment. M.K. Shivalingam, a former MP, said he was shocked because there were about 2,000 bodies of tiger fighters on the site and there had been twice that number of memorial stones. How can the government build national reconciliation like this? He asked. According to the army commander Jagat Jayasurya, having vacated its temporary premises in a Jaffna hotel, the 51 division had to move to a government land. Commander Jayasurya said the military had been allocated this site, which was owned by the prison's department, and he was not aware of people expressing unhappiness. Sri Lanka has a proud history of respecting the enemies who have fallen in the battlefield. For example, the tomb of King Elara, who died at the hands of King Dutugamunu, is still respected. Many Sri Lankans wonder why the government could not show the same wisdom of King Dutugamunu. The location of the 51st Division's military headquarters on a LTT cemetery is being perceived by Tamils as aimed at reminding them of their defeat in the civil war in May 2009. As one unnamed Tamil teacher said, this is a monument that adds humiliations to hurt. Respect for the dead is an important way of reaching out to a defeated people. It is an important step for reconciliation. By demolishing LTT graves and building an army headquarters on the site, the Sri Lankan government has indicated that it lacks the vision and wisdom of King Dutugamunu. Vimal Veeravansa, champion of people's rights, now has become the defender of the ruthless dictators, according to some political observers. 
his party, National Freedom Front, a coalition partner of the Sri Lankan government, led a demonstration near the UN office in Colombo against the attacks to Libya done by the international forces sanctioned by the United Nations. According to Minister Virawansa, it was up to the Libyan people to decide on how to resolve internal issues in Libya. Meanwhile, President Mahinda Rajapaksa in a statement said that he always believed that people are correct and it cannot accept attacks towards civilians. Libyans have been demonstrating against Gaddafi since 15th February, demanding his departure after more than 40 years in power. The UN estimates that Gaddafi's forces have killed more than 1,000 people since the beginning of the People's Revolution against the long-standing Libyan dictator. The Chief Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court has opened a formal investigation into alleged crimes against humanity in Libya. He named Muammar Gaddafi as one of those possibly responsible for attacks on civilians. The question many political observers have for Minister Virawansa, whose side are you? On the side of the people's power or on the side of Gaddafi's power? <laughs> Sri Lankan beauty Marina Dasanayake will represent Sri Lanka for Mrs. Asia USA 2011 that will be held on this August 2011 in Los Angeles, California. Marina joins us from Los Angeles. Uh, Marina. Uh, what made you decide to contest for this beauty pageant? Uh, yes, actually, uh, it was a coincidence happened. Uh, one of my performance that uh, I performed uh, last year for Asia Explore uh, event, it was one of our uh, dance that uh, from I, I did before for Run One Rayak Productions. Uh, so I met this lady, uh, uh, Virgilia Villagas and she invited me after my performance uh, to be in the pageant so I'm happy and um, uh, that I got a chance to represent my country. Uh, could you tell us about your background and any future plans uh, you may have? I am a mom, um, uh, live in California, Los Angeles. Uh, uh, I earned a diploma in mean, uh, Bridal Dressing and uh, Beauty Culture at Tirani Beauty Institute, um, Dehivala, Sri Lanka. And I was working for them for three years as one of the judges before I came to the United States. And uh, of course, I have a background in modeling, like for sh a short period, I have modeled for Gamini Panditaratna and Mrs. Tirani Piris uh, in Sri Lanka. And after I came to the States and uh, I'm involved with this uh, Run One Rayak Productions, I, I'm sure you have heard about it uh, a lot. My future plans is, uh, I have been in the Run One Rayak for Run One Rayak 1, 2 and 3 and we are planning to uh, do the show Run One Rayak 4 uh, next year. And it, it, I'm planning to do this movie with, uh, with the, uh, Keith Runger and she's the producer for this movie, um, hopefully next year. Uh, Marina. If you win the title, uh, Mrs. Uh, Asia, how that would help uh, to promote Sri Lanka? Uh, yes. Um, well, my personal opinion is you really don't have to win a title or anything if you want to promote your country or help someone. But uh, if given a chance to be crowned as next Mrs. Asia USA, uh, it will be uh, open a new door for me to be a good ambassador to my country and of course my uh, neighboring countries. My hope is uh, to help all the less uh, fortunate children who live in not, not only in Sri Lanka but in the entire world. So the, having the title would be uh, a strong influence to be reach my hope. Uh, thank you, Marina. We wish you all the very best. Uh, that was Marina Dasanayake from Los Angeles. Thank you, Boston Lanka News. That concludes our news edition. We meet you again with another news edition of News, Views and Entertainment from Boston and USA. Till then, goodbye.